I am talking to you here, uh, it may be morning, evening or night to you, but for, for us it's about one o'clock in the morning in Jerusalem, fresh from a wonderful, wonderful event at the Cunningham home, the American ambassador to Israel, who hosted Susan G. Komen, Race for the Cure, Ambassador Nancy Brinka, Hadassah, your Hadassah, my Hadassah, and uh, Mayor Nir Barkat in the municipality of, of Jerusalem. And, and one of the guests there, one of the leaders um, in fighting breast cancer, uh, is a well-known personality to many of you, um, and is someone that you know from Fox News, Jennifer Griffin. And I'm so grateful to you for being willing to take the time to come here and speak to us when you should really be sleeping so we can get up tomorrow <laughs> to race in Jerusalem. Thank you for all that Hadassah is doing because if you weren't here, we wouldn't be here. And uh, it's amazing to be sitting, look at, the, at these walls. Just um, less than an hour ago, they were all covered in pink. And when I arrived here on Monday night, uh, they had just lit the city walls. And I can't tell you the number of people around town who have asked me, why are the city, why are the old city walls pink? And the word is spreading, and it's amazing to see how everyone in the city is talking about this Komen race and the role that Hadassah is playing in bringing breast cancer awareness to this country where breast cancer kills, is the leading killer of women. So what does this mean to you personally? Exactly a year ago, I was diagnosed with uh, stage three triple negative breast cancer. It's a very aggressive form of breast cancer that affects uh, many young women and it, it is approximately 15% of all breast cancer cases. What makes us different is that it is not estrogen positive, it's not progesterone positive, and it's not HER2 positive. And it is the type of breast cancer that affects Ashkenazi Jews most. Are you and Jewish? I'm not Jewish, but I've always said that I'm an honorary Jew because I lived in Jerusalem for so long. I lived here from 1999 to 2007. Uh, I worked for Fox News. I covered the Intifada here. I never thought I'd be covering uh, a war in my own body. I covered other people's wars in the past. Uh, but a year ago on Yom Kippur, I got the call from my radiologist saying that they had found that this tumor was cancer. What we don't have with triple negative cancer is we don't have a tamoxifen and we don't have a Herceptin. We don't have a drug that will prevent a recurrence. And I went through 17 rounds of chemotherapy. I had a double mastectomy on April 6th mm. and then six weeks of daily radiation. This is not uncommon for anybody who's been diagnosed with breast cancer, but it was you know, five months ago I was completely bald. I um, had lost all my toenails. My toenails are finally growing back. I can wear sandals here in Jerusalem. It's been a, a, a we and beautiful. You look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I didn't, beautiful. I, had, I had long blonde hair before. I guess the point is a year ago, if I were sitting here next to you, I never would have thought that I would be here in Jerusalem uh, talking about how to cure breast cancer. We were in a fight for our lives in the last year, my family and I. I have three small children. Two, my two daughters were born at Hadassah Mount Scope, just oh. over the walls there. So Jerusalem is very, very near and dear to my heart. So this was the first time you were back since you had covered it? <laughs> it's the first time that I've been back and I haven't start, stopped crying since I stepped Why? in. Because this was a very, this was a very important part of my life. I had two babies born here. I lived through the Intifada years, which you know how difficult those years were here. I started getting mammograms when I was 30 years old here in Jerusalem. I started getting mammograms because here in Jerusalem, people are so aware that breast cancer is a reality, and I was aware that. I had a family history, but that didn't stop me from getting breast cancer because the kind of breast cancer I have grows often in between mammograms. It's aggressive, it's fast growing. I had a nine centimeter tumor in my breast that was the size of a grapefruit when we found it. And the reason that I didn't find it, even though I was doing mammograms, is that I was nursing my third child, my son at the time, and during my pregnancy and the six months of nursing, this tumor grew out of control and was masked. You're not safe when you're pregnant and nursing, even though we all grew up thinking that that would protect us. You still have to be aware about what's going on in your breasts, 
and they need to find screening techniques. And that's why Nancy and Komen are here talking to scientists about the next great breakthrough. Had you had any family history? My great-grandmother died of breast cancer when she was in, uh, 32 years old. Mm. My grandmother had another form of cancer, but not breast cancer, so it skipped a generation. Then my mother is a survivor as well. And that's why I was, I was being careful and, and doing mammograms, but this, this cancer sneaked up on me. Hadass has always had to deal with it, that the issue of, of women and the cultural issues of educating women to understand just everything that you're just saying, know your body, know how to get tested, etc. And I think that here in Israel, and I'm sure you saw it when you were a, a reporter, a journalist uh, here, how difficult sometimes that is. And in America too. There are still so many barriers where, and, and cultural norms that, that we, we're still having to educate women that it's okay to say the word breast. It's okay to talk about uh, what you need to do to examine yourself. Um, I met tonight, very interestingly enough, I met a man who is a two-time breast cancer survivor. I was just told tonight that uh, there are 650 Palestinians who are coming to the race tomorrow to yes. walk side by side here in Jerusalem. If any city can bring people together and can break down all the, the barriers and, and there will be no politics tomorrow. This is a, a disease that knows no boundaries. And when you get a diagnosis of breast cancer, it strikes you and your family the same. And I think also for Hadassah, and one of the things we've been most proud of for almost 100 years, we've never been about identifying Palestinians or Jews or Arabs or anybody else. It's about people with certain illnesses that need to be treated. It's a different story today, that if you really do take care of yourself, there are a lot of things that you can do and a lot of things that even if tamoxifen or others can't help, right. there are things that really will give you a long life. First of all, we may not have a tamoxifen or a Herceptin for triple negative breast cancer, but we do have two things in our arsenal, and that is exercise. There are studies showing that 45 minutes of exercise a day can help prevent a recurrence by 60 percent. And a low saturated fat diet, and that's 33 grams of fat or less a day, a lean, low fat diet can also prevent a recurrence. What do your kids know? My kids know everything. They know more about breast cancer than most <laughs> oncologists. My kids were so fabulous. The, the two girls, both of whom were born at Hadassah Mount Scopus, they were seven and nine when I was diagnosed. And they decided to videotape me through this process. And what we found from the beginning was to include them in the process, to take them wig shopping, to make a game out of it. They named my wigs. Before I was finished with treatment, we were doing Komen races in Washington. They are educated, they are, uh, they are activists, and they, they took me for show and tell when I was bald. They'd take me and I'd take off my wig and my seven-year-old would stand up before her, her classmates and say, explain what breast cancer was and what cancer was. Some pe people just pull the cover over their heads. Yeah, so how? One of the programs I found quite useful was something called Look Good, Feel Better, which the American Cancer Society um, and the Personal Products Council sponsors. It's a, a workshop that all the hospitals in the U.S. participate in, where you go and you learn how to put on makeup and wear your wigs, and they donate incredible amounts of makeup. And I found that on days when I walked out of the house and forgot to put on my lipstick and forgot to pencil in my eyebrows, People looked at me as though I was a cancer patient. They treated me like a cancer patient. I started feeling like a cancer patient. It was a whole different psychology. This disease tries to steal what it is to be a woman and what it is to be feminine. And by put, taking that extra few minutes to put on your makeup and rock your wig and walk out of the house proudly, that is the way you psychologically get through the hard year. So how's it going to feel tomorrow when we're walking here? It's going to be very emotional for me. The city is a very... It's a special place. <laughs> I'm getting choked up now thinking about it. <laughs> um, you know, during this process, during this year, my friends would write to me from Jerusalem and they'd send me a picture. I'd get all these pictures of pink notes that they'd put in the Western Wall. And I had a collection of pink notes in the Western Wall that were prayers for our family. And I'm sitting here today, and they worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Can it continue working? Yeah. So it's going to be tough tomorrow. It's going to be very um, exhilarating tomorrow. It's going to be very 
powerful to see, the sea of pink. It's going to be wonderful to walk. I'm walking arm in arm with everybody from the Jerusalem Bureau. My entire team of 20 people from the Bureau are going to be there. Oh, wow. And we're, we, you know, again, we covered the Intifada together. We went through some tough times. We were on the border of uh, Lebanon for 34 days and underneath Katusha rockets. And uh, we walked through this minefield together, and they're going to be there arm in arm with me. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you're an absolutely exquisite woman. Hair, no hair, you're <laughs> just beautiful. And I think the advice that you're giving to people, they should follow. There are things you can do to keep yourself strong, to keep yourself alive. Absolutely. And you're doing it. And you gotta fight every day for fight. your life.